Hi, welcome back to this Intro to Seaborn series. My name is Kimberly Fessel, and today we're going to be covering the Seaborn box plot. So the box plot actually contains several different component pieces, so I want to walk you through each piece individually. The first thing I do when I draw a box plot is find the median. So let's say I have data like these. All I'm trying to do is subdivide this data so that 50% of it lives on the left and 50% of it lives on the right. Once I've found this value, I'll draw a line representing the median. Now I'm actually going to focus down on just the lower half of this data. Once again, I want to subdivide this data so that I have 50% on one side and 50% on the other. But remember, I'm already working with half of the data. So half of half is now 25% of the data. And once I found this 25th percentile, I'm going to draw another vertical line. Focusing over on the upper half of data, I'm just going to do the same thing again. Subdivide this data and then draw a line. And there you have it. Each of these lines represents the 25th percentile, the median, and the 75th percentile of your data. Once you have these three lines, all that's left to do to construct the box portion is just to connect the lines. And we usually fill this in with a color. That's it. That's the box part. The other part of this graph uh, represents something called the whiskers. So to build the whiskers, I actually start by measuring the inner quartile range. So this is the distance from the 25th percentile up to the 75th percentile. Once I know that distance, I'm going to stretch the whiskers out in either direction, uh, 1.5 times this inner quartile range. But it gets a little bit trickier than that. So let's go ahead and focus on the left-hand side first. This is, I think, the trickiest part of building a box plot. So I want to go ahead and build this left-hand whisker. Instead of strictly following this guideline, however, I actually only stretch out the whisker until the last data point that lives within the 1.5 times interquartile range. For us, that's going to be a much shorter whisker, and I'm only going to go down to the value at 1. When I try to build the whisker on the right, I stretch out the whisker and see that there's actually one data point that falls outside of my 1.5 times interquartile range, this one right here at 12. So instead of uh, extending that whisker out, I actually shrink it back to, again, the last value that lives within this range, or the value at 8. The final data point, because it lived outside of that uh, 1.5 times interquartile range, actually I'm going to label that as an outlier and put a little diamond shape here. And that's it. That's how you build a box plot. So each component piece of the box plot tells you something different about your data, and the other nice thing is that you'll often be able to split up your data into different categories so that you actually have two different boxes that you can compare the distribution between your various categories. So the box plot allows you to understand the distribution of your data in terms of summary statistics. It also is going to flag anomalous data points so you can follow up and see if you actually have any outliers in your data. But the real beauty of the box plot comes when you're splitting your data among categories. In fact, Seaborn classifies the box plot as a categorical distribution plot. Now that we know the basics about the box plot, let's dive into the Seaborn code. So in order to demo the Seaborn box plot, I'm going to start off by importing the PyPlot and Seaborn libraries and alias both of those. I'll load in some data from Seaborn itself and drop a few null values. You'll see these data are about cars, and each row just references a different car and the various different properties of that car. I'm also going to set my Seaborn styling to the white grid, and I'll just do one more bit of data cleaning. Um, if I take a look at the number of cylinders each car has, you'll see that most cars have either four, six, or eight cylinders, but we do have a couple with these odd values, three and five cylinders. Uh, it'll become a little bit more clear why I'm doing this in just a second, but I'm going to filter down to just the cars that have either four, six, or eight cylinders. Okay, so now that we've got our data filtered down as we would like it, um, the way to build a box plot in Seaborn 
you just reference that Seaborn library and say that you'd like to build a box plot. And now you can just pass in whatever data you'd like. Uh, I'm going to look at the cars, miles per gallon. Um, so this is a Panda series, but you could pass in a list or a NumPy array as well. And the resulting plot looks really similar to what we were looking at in the intro. Um, just to verify that everything is exactly as we would expect, let's go ahead and look at the summary statistics for this Panda series. And I'm just going to reference uh, the describe functionality here. So you'll see my 25th uh, percentile, the median, and the 75th percentile exactly align to those gray lines at 17, 23, and 29. Uh, you'll also see that we don't actually have any outliers in this series. So the minimum value at 9 and then the maximum value at 46.6 align to the end of those whiskers. But the really uh, exciting part about using a box plot is actually using categories to separate out your data. So let's actually go ahead back to the uh, cars data. Um, what I'm going to do now is pass in one value for X. I'm actually going to pass in the cars origin for that and then a different value for Y. All right, so here's where the box plot gets really interesting. So uh, Seaborn will actually separate out your data. It will group it based on this category, the origin uh, of where the cars were made. And then it will perform this box plot calculation uh, for each of those groups um, miles per gallon. So this is one way to do um, a box plot with you know, an X value and a Y value. Uh, the other thing you can do if both of these values come from the same data frame, you can actually use a little bit different syntax here. Um, so we can just reference the column name. And then we just have to say where the data comes from. So it comes from that cars data frame. So this is an alternative way to compute. It's really, it's the exact same plot, but it's just an alternative way to do the syntax. Sometimes this turns out to be a little bit easier, especially if you have multiple different columns that you are trying to reference. Um, other things that Seaborn can do, you can actually split things up not just by one category, but by two categories. And the way that you do that is by referencing yet another uh, property called hue. So here I have the same uh, origin in miles per gallon. I'm just going to add to this that I would also like to split up by yet another category. Uh, I'm also going to split up by um, the cylinders here. And so now you can see why I filter down to four, six, or eight cylinders. For each of those different types of cars, we are actually splitting those out. Um, each, each country group actually gets split also by cylinders, and we have a different hue or a different color for each of those cylinder categories. And so before it looked like, you know, that the U.S. Uh, just had like a terrible miles per gallon. But what we can actually see now is that really it's because the U.S. is the only producer of these eight cylinder cars at this time period. Uh, if you look across the four cylinders with each different country, you'll see that those are pretty similar in terms of miles per gallon. One other interesting thing you can do is actually create your own categories on the fly. So if I look back at this um, column called model year, I'll notice that most of these cars are produced in the 70s and a couple in the 80s. My median point here is the year 1976. So I could actually create another column. Uh, I'll call it um, newer model. And this column is just going to be a set of true or false values. If that model year is greater than 76 or 1976, um, I will put a true in this column. If it is not, I will put a false. And so now that I've created this categorical column, uh, newer model, I can actually use that for my hue. And I'll be able to see that cars that um, are newer than 1976 actually had better miles per gallon than those older cars. So that's also an interesting way to utilize this hue property. So now that we know the coding basics, let's see what your options are for styling those box plots. So like with uh, pretty much any Seaborn plot that you're uh, making, you have several different styling options available for you 
uh, to customize your box plot. The first thing I wanted to tell you about, um, if you do happen to um, want to switch this into, um, instead of having these sort of vertical bars, if you'd like to have horizontal bars, um, if you're just plotting two different columns, you can actually just switch the order of those. So if I switch the X to be the miles per gallon, and then the Y to be the origin, you'll see that I now have horizontal bars. So just depending on the aesthetics of your problem, you might decide to switch that. The other thing we might notice is that the ordering of these bars may not be exactly what we want. So you don't need to completely rearrange your data. Uh, you can actually just access a property called order in order to, um, to order those bars the way that you'd like. So let's try ordering this by um, Japan, then Europe, and then the USA. So you can see that now my bars go along with um, the largest miles per gallon on average down to the least. So you can sort these bars however you'd like depending on your particular data story. And that just goes along with this property order. The other thing you can do, let's say you do have a hue in, also with this plot. If you would like to um, change the order of the hue, you can do that as well. So that's just called hue order. Let's put the true values on top and then the um, false on bottom. Great. So that can control um, which of these boxes shows up on top. Um, speaking of color, if you have specific color requirements, of course, that's an option for you as well. So let's say you are doing this uh, normal um, origin and miles per gallon plot. If you would like everything to be one solid color, you can switch that right here. I'll switch everything to green. Okay, so now all three bars are the exact same color. If you did happen to have um, a hue involved here, if you had that uh, property turned on, so let's switch this to newer model. Now you'll see that that color is actually being interpreted um, as a lighter version of that color and a darker version of that color, just so that you can actually utilize this property hue and have two different colors for your different categories. You can also change the width of your box plot. So right now the default is setting at about 0.8. You can change the width of those um, bars if you'd like. Let's actually just decrease it down to 0.5. And now you see that the width of the bars is actually much uh, smaller. There is also a property con to control how thick those lines are. So the default line width is 1.5, but of course you can increase that. Let's try 2.5. And now you'll see that each box is outlined with a darker uh, line. Another property called Wisp for Whisker uh, will actually help you control how long those whiskers are. So remember we talked about in the beginning that I'm using 1.5 times my interquartile range to build these whiskers. I can actually change that. If I prefer to have shorter whiskers, I could decrease that down to one times the interquartile range or longer whiskers, I could increase that to two. But notice that uh, which points are considered outliers can definitely change when you are controlling this um, property WIS. Right, so with one, we have quite a few more outliers, uh, quite a few more points that are being labeled as outliers, that is. Speaking of those outliers, if you would actually like to change how big that diamond is, um, that's a property called flyer size. So sometimes people call those little diamonds the flyers. And the default for this is, I believe, five, but you could decrease those flyers to, let's say, two. Now you've got pretty small diamonds. Or you could increase those uh, depending on your styling. And finally, I just wanted to mention that there are even more styling options than what is even mentioned in the Seaborn uh, documentation, because remember that Seaborn is just uh, built on top of matplotlib. So it's inheriting a lot of code from matplotlib's version of the box plot. So there's even more styling you can do. I would suggest checking out the matplotlib documentation if you'd like to see some of these. Um, but just for one example, there is a property called show caps that you can turn off which basically just removes those caps from the whiskers themselves. That's not something that's mentioned in the Seaborn documentation, but it is in the matplotlib documentation. So be sure to check that out if there's even more styling that you want access to. 
So I hope you've enjoyed learning about Seaborn's box plot. This was our first categorical distribution plot in this Intro to Seaborn series, but there's a couple more coming up. In fact, the very next video is about Seaborn's violin plot. Take care and I'll see you in that one.